Welcome back to another episode of Forino Connections. I'm Clayton Pattison with Technical Support. And I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager. And today we're going to talk about interfacing and NMEA 2000. Now when this boat was built a decade or so ago, it used a mixed system of both NMEA 2000 and NMEA 0183 devices and data, which can be done correctly, but it really also can go wrong and cause a lot of problems. It's complicated as well. It really yeah, is. Yeah, when you start to mix that two data sets together yeah. and converters, and it's, it's hard to understand what's going on in the network. Yeah, and trying to get everything to work right. But for this retrofit, we're going to go all NMEA 2000. That's right. And when we say NMEA 2000, there's actually different flavors or different qualities of NMEA 2000. For example, here's a T chain that I took off the boat, kind of old and chintzy. And yeah. in fact, uh, you know, it's not something that we want to keep on the boat. No. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Actisense for some new products mm -hmm. and use their products on this boat in a couple different ways. In fact, we have a special guest, Pete Braffitt, from Gemico and Airmar to talk about the Actisense product line and how we're going to install the NMEA 2000 network on this boat. Well, the, the Actisense product line specifically has some great features that, as you mentioned, you've selected for this boat and make it easier to, to install. Um, one of the, the easiest features to, to see is the mounting holes built right into the T connectors and a lot of the products where you can just go ahead and mount your drop, uh, your drop locations around the boat screw the T-connectors in, they're ambidextrous, so you can go both mm -hmm. directions with okay. those. And then once they're bolted to a, a bulkhead, you still have room to tighten or loosen the nut, so you can make all your cable connections afterwards. Makes for a really they clean, really solid. simple they do, installation. They really hard. They're very beefy. Yeah, yeah. The cables are available in quarter meter all the way up to 10 meter length, so you can really customize the installation, so you okay. end up with a lot yeah. of extra coil oh, up perfect. cable. So on this boat, are we going to convert to all 2000? And yeah. what are we going to put on board? This boat is going to go to all NMEA 2000, and perfect. what we're going to do is we're going to use some of these Actisense products in a, di a couple different ways. Okay. We're going to have one of these multi-Ts underneath the console near the displays okay. it's going to bring in the two TZ Touch 2 15.6 inch MFDs okay. as well as the radio and the fusion display so okay. we're going to have all those coming into this multi-T and we're going to bring this multi-T down to another multi-T down below where we're going to bring in the autopilot and the okay. speed depth temp sensor and a couple other new NMEA 2000 okay, components. So everybody's going to be on the same backbone. Yeah, everything's going to be on the same backbone. It's going to be super clean because these T's are nice and tight. And one of the problems I have seen with NMEA 2000 is technicians will typically take some individual T's and just kind of string them together and not support them. So you end up getting like a rainbow effect of T's. Yeah. And that's bad because vibration can cause issues. Those T's can actually break internally, which I also yeah. have seen. I actually have a video on that on oh, YouTube, really? yeah, yeah, where I had an intermittent T. As soon as the, as soon as the uh, owner started up the engines on a big Fleming, the, we actually had intermittent T problem where the T would vibrate and cause bad enemy A2000 data. Oh, okay. This, these Actisense uh, solid blocks really eliminate that possibility yeah. and they're a lot more secure. And more compact. And more compact. Nice yeah. So it's going to be really nice. We still have to add terminators into the network. But we have some uh, some NMEA 2000 runs that okay. we're going to do up to the antenna, up to the GPS antenna. And these are all the pre-made cables that we don't have to put ends right. on. Right. Yeah. Pre-made cables. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and one other thing we're going to use is this Actisense power injector, and we're going to actually split up the backbone in terms of power. So half the backbone is going to be on one breaker for power, and half the backbone is going to be on another breaker for power, okay. and that will give us a little more redundancy in the NMEA 2000 network as well. Perfect. All right. It's a great way to troubleshoot as well. You can break Absolutely, the backbone yeah. in half yeah. if you yeah. should yeah. ever have a question. Yeah. Is there, there's a problem yeah. the other, so yeah. that we don't lose the entire backbone if one component yeah. for a lightning strike or only one component goes bad. Yeah. So let's give everybody that's watching a brief rundown of MEMA 2000 and the architecture, how it all works, how it connects together, you know, terminators, sure. power, yeah. cable yeah. length requirements, well, all that stuff. Sure. Do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. you know, the basics of an NMEA 2000 network are, the, as, as um, Eric mentioned, you're going to have power in the middle. Okay. Typically, you want to try to have that power distributed evenly on both sides of the network. So, you really want to try to have your device load similar on both halves of that yeah. network. Okay. Um, you're going to end up with termination at the beginning and the end of the network. So anything in between there um, is, is, there's certain regulations. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're not supposed to go any more than six meters off right, of any drop. Right. So there's a lot of yeah. um, limitations and stuff, but essentially the network is as basic as power in the center. Okay. Um, you know, d your load's divided evenly on both sides and then mm -hmm. termination now, at both ends. what's the maximum length for a 
backbone, if you will, because the backbone can be made up of a number of these T-connectors yeah. or cables like this. Yeah. You know, what's the maximum? Okay, good question. Up? It really depends on the type of cable we're using. Okay. Uh, NMEA 2000 power and uh, network cables available in either a mini yep. or micro. Mm -hmm. And then for this boat, small boats like the center console or smaller boats typically, will typically use a micro cable connectors. Yeah. That's what you can go 100 with meters with micro cable. Okay, 100 meters. And 200 meters with a mini. So that's okay. how long the backbone can be. Okay. So 100 meters, 300 feet, more and, than 300 feet. And the backbone, long enough. And the backbone would be from terminator to terminator. Exactly. So that you could do 100 meters between the two terminators. With just the micro with cable. With the micro cable yeah. or 200 meters with the mini cable. Yeah. Yeah. Now what about drops? Are they terminated? Tops, drops are not terminated. The only, the only terminate, terminators that in an NMEA 2000 network are at the ends of the backbone. One terminator at each end okay. and then six meter drops. Correct. If you okay. have to go longer than six meters, you have to make that part of the backbone. Okay. So there's different information online about this, but mm -hmm. in general, you just have to be careful that NMEA 2000 is in fact a networking system. Mm -hmm. It uses timing and signals between different points in the network and you have to obey the basic rules. And one of the most basic rules is making sure that you don't have a longer drop than six meters off that the backbone. That comes up a lot. a lot. Yeah, and it causes problems. And a lot it of does. times that equates to voltage drop. So what, that's what happens when you overextend mm -hmm. a network, it's a voltage right. loss across yeah. there. Yeah, one of the things that I think is pretty unique to ActaSense is that mm -hmm. this sounds complicated, and as you know, it's not. Mm -hmm. But if you follow some basic guidelines, that's great. But say you had a small center console, 15, 16, 17 yep. footer, mm -hmm. one or two MFDs, a GPS antenna, and maybe an engine gateway. Yep. This is an all-in-one solution. It's called the small boat network. Mm -hmm. And instead of having to add external termination, literally you just add power. So there's you know single power input here, right. terminations built into it, and you've okay, got so four drops. This, yeah. So this has both terminators built yeah. into Correct, this. built right yeah. into it. Oh, really? So this okay. is a complete so NMEA 2000 network it by itself with Small power boat. injection. Small boat. You can come off here if you really had to. You could put a T off of one of these if you, you really could, wanted yeah. to. But this is made for small boats, but it's really clever, really slick, and it's mm -hmm. a nice tight design that allows you to add NMEA 2000 to any boat, uh, any small boat, with no other components. Right. Yeah. And this really is cool. also this a whole great network. Shop tool. Yeah, I have a lot of technicians oh, yeah. will have this on their bench. Mm -hmm. You want to do troubleshooting at the shop, or you want to pre-program a product? Mm -hmm. It's real simple. You run a USB gateway into your PC, mm -hmm. hook yeah. a few devices up, and all you have to do is add power. You can put a 12 volt wall brick on it, all right. and Excellent. you've got a network on your bench yeah. to do well, some testing. That's something so that's that, unique. You know, that's something that most technicians and you know dealers that are watching yeah, this should probably have in their mm -hmm. toolbox for right. diagnostics. Yeah, very inexpensive mm -hmm. way. The other option. Um, is if you're in the field, and we mentioned, you know, as Eric mentioned, he's going to power this separately. So you could actually break a network in half, connect it here, and troubleshoot separately True. if you wanted to. Yeah. So that's, it's a great that's all like, around that's universal like. tool. So. Now, so, so one other thing we're going to do, we need to do, is there is an existing NMEA 0183 interface to the Mercury Verado network. Yes. Yeah. But what okay. we're going to do is that only provided, I think, position and speed to the, so, to the network. Somewhat what limited. we're going to do is we're going to add an, a Mercury gateway, an NMEA right. 2000 gateway, so that we can get a lot more engine data out of the system and push data back into the Mercury where it wants speed or position or different mm -hmm. kinds of information. That'll add a lot of flexibility and it'll allow us to see the Mercury gauges and engines directly on our MFD. And it's a safe gateway. It's designed exactly that as to be a, um, a bridge between the two devices. Okay. But mm -hmm. it's also got a firewall in it so you can't, if something should go wrong on the NMEA 2000 network side, it doesn't affect not going to affect side. the engine. So okay. it's just great. All right. It's a good Excellent. safe way to do it. Yeah, Perfect. so we're going with a complete NMEA 2000 system. There won't be any 0183 on this boat anymore. Right. And that's fine with me. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go do it. I just got done finishing the upper console area with all the wiring and cleaning up all the cables. It's nice with NMEA 2000. There's about 50% less cables up here. Everything just goes right into this really cool ActaSense Multi-T. Notice how I used a small piece of starboard left over, a scrap piece, and made a little uh, bulkhead bracket and mounted that right to the bulkhead right behind the, uh, right behind the radios. It's awesome. It's, there was a string of T's right here that were kind of wobbling and, and just tie wrapped in. This is solid. It's nice and tight. It's not going to be an issue. So I've got the NMEA 2000 network broken up into a couple different ActaSense Multi-T's. There's one near the MFDs, there's two here in the lower console, and there's one by the autopilot. This is the one location in the main part of the console. And you can see that I've got a lot of uh, NMEA 2000 uh, uh, wiring coming in. The one important wire is the NMEA 2000 
uh, DST200, which is a speed temp depth sensor. That comes with its own 6 meter drop cable directly from the, uh, the sensor itself. And it's important that I bring that in here, if I bring it in here, I put the terminator at this location. Because if I was, if I was to move this terminator up to a different part of the backbone, I would technically be breaking the NMEA 2000 rule of having only a limit of six meter drops. So I put the terminator here instead of up top, and I have the rest of the connections in. With regard to making this NMEA 2000 network more redundant, I've included the Actisense MPT-1 power injector, and it's a split power injector, meaning the power that goes off to this side of this block is powered by two independent wires, and the power that comes off of this side of the block is powered by another two independent wires. The nice thing about this type of, uh, of, of, of power injector is that we can make the backbone more redundant because I can put separate fuses on each side. So if something were to happen, a short circuit, say we, uh, we had a problem, the NMEA 2000 speed temp dent sensor had a, a short circuit. It could theoretically take out power on this side of the backbone, but we would still have power on this side of the backbone. This side of the, this fuse would be blown, but this fuse would be okay. So half of the network would still survive and be okay. And the nice thing about that is just, it makes a more redundant system. A couple other things to notice in this area is that I ran the power wires away from the steering compass. The steering compass is right up here and you have to get the, all the high current wires away from that area or you could have problems with the steering compass performance. The other thing I like to check with my installations when I get done is the NMEA 2000 resistance to make sure that nobody's been in here messing around, everything's sound. If I have both 120 ohm terminating resistors in the NMEA 2000 backbone, I should see a net resistance on this bus of 60 ohms. Let's check that right now just to make sure everything's good. The system's been up and running, so I'm pretty sure everything's fine, but it doesn't hurt to double check. Let's hook up a meter to it. Just a simple ohm meter on resistance. I'll plug in uh, my uh, cable to it. I have a little test cable. I'm just looking for 60 ohms on the white and the blue wires. Those are the data wires in the NMEA 2000 cabling. That's where we're gonna look. Connected right here at this open terminal. Find out where it's keyed. And you'll see, as soon as I get that in there, I'm gonna see a net resistance of almost exactly 60 ohms. That means my NMEA 2000 bus is correct. I've already seen everything's reporting properly, so I'm really confident that this NMEA, that this NMEA 2000 installation is, is proper and it's not gonna give any problems for the customer. You know, Clayton, it was great having Pete here to talk mm -hmm. about the architecture and the Actisense product line. Mm -hmm. I've installed those Actisense multi-tees at the various locations on this boat, and the NMEA 2000 network went in great. In fact, Fantastic. let's talk about a little bit about retrofitting in general when you're down here pulling wires. One of the things you have to watch out as a technician or an installer is orphaned cables when you're replacing things. There's a lot of cables that were in here that mm -hmm. I pulled out, and it's really important not to leave old cabling in the boat yeah. so that it complicates things for the next guy coming along. Exactly. It's also extra weight and it really looks unsightly and it can be dangerous because that those cables can actually end up corroding or touching things and causing problems. So I pulled out about 80 pounds of cables. You can go over and check them out, but it's just amazing. But the nice thing is it's done. We are done. done. We're done. The installation's done. Everything in here is buttoned up. It's cleaned up. I have everything tie wrapped almost as nicely as CV does it from the factory. Maybe not perfect, but it's pretty nice. And, and I wanted my work to reflect the quality that CV, of the CV work that, mm -hmm. that they do out of the factory. So we're really ready to go. So we're done. And it is, we're ready. So well, you know what this means, right? A sea, sea trial. trial. We're gonna take this boat out in our next episode and give you a full sea trial of this boat. Test everything and show you how it all works. So join us next time for the sea trial. So thanks for watching, and if you like the exciting content that you've seen, click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furuno.